o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday, except legal holidays. And for filing purposes only, 9 o'clock a.m. to 12 noon on Saturdays. Civil Division has a new website that you can access to view case docket information at www.bccourts.gov forward slash e-access. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. I was calling with regards to a case. I have the case number. Already. It's two thousand seventeen. C A. Zero zero seven. Six nine four B. Parties names in the case. The parties is Joseph Crisaya, plaintiff versus Metstar Health at all defendants okay how can i help you yes i'm the plaintiff joseph prasaya uh, yesterday i came to your office i filed a ifp application and i also submitted a a notice of appeal and i was wondering why the notice of appeal was not uh filed into the system okay did you ask for that to be waived i'm sorry Yes, I asked for the. You ask for your fees to be waived for the notice of appeal, then it's not going to be on the docket until the judge grants your motion. If you want that notice of appeal on the docket, then you need to pay the one hundred dollars. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, so uh, if I don't pay the one hundred dollars, uh, I have to wait till the judge rules on the motion. Okay, and and then and then what happens with the filing date because um, they give. They they give thirty days to file the the uh, the notice of appeal. So uh, if it goes so over, your time is still ticking. Although you filed that motion to have your fees waived, your time is still moving, still ticking. The clock is still ticking. So if your time runs out for your notice of appeal, we want to take your notice of appeal. If the judge grants your motion for informal parties to have your fees waived, then that's up to the opposing party and the judge to get into if your notice of appeal was filed out of time. We don't get into that. Okay, because here's my question. Um, I looked at the DCCA rule, uh, rule 24. We don't get into the rules. So, as I stated before... Right, I'm trying to figure out why I wasn't allowed to put... I wasn't allowed to... It does say... The appeals code says I'm supposed to uh, be able to file both items at the same time. File both items? What are you talking about? Okay. Um, the appeals code um, says that I should be able to file the IFP application right along with the appeals and it both... Your appeal. So you hold it on. Two things could have happened yesterday. I don't know. But I'm going to go, so, the motion for informal papers, you could attach that notice of appeal behind it. Well, I didn't do it, they did it. I'm sorry, I'm I, you a I know, I didn't attach anything no. behind anything, I gave two separate items. And okay. what the rule says is you're, suppo so, you're supposed okay. to file both items, ma'am. You're not following the rules. No, the rules. I'm not supposed to do anything, because I didn't help you yesterday. No, but your office. Your office is supposed to file both items. Okay, sure. Sir, the clerk at the window could have took your notice of appeal and attached it behind the motion. That's fine. That, that could have happened yesterday. So I'm assuming that didn't happen yesterday. Well, I'm not sure what the clerk did behind the window. I mean, you're behind the window. I'm not. I handed the clerk two separate items. And what the DCCA rule, num rule number 24 says that both items get filed together. I, I mean, at the same time. It is. It's right here. You gave it to him yesterday. It's behind the motion, sir. It's scanned in behind the motion. Okay, you do see it scanned behind the motion. Okay. Now you wait for the judge to make the decision. Right, but the but but what you're saying is the clock keeps ticking. The clock does not would not keep ticking if you filed it two separate items. The notice of appeal is not 
officially on the docket. It should be on. Clear about that. You're not listening. So you're not following the rules. You're supposed to. Notice of appeal. Let me finish. Okay. The notice of appeal is sitting behind the motion for a former pauper. That's not the rule, ma'am. Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. It's not an official document until the judge grants or denies your request. Now. It, it becomes an official document if he was to come in here and say, you know what, I don't want to move forward with waiting for the judge to make a decision on this informal purpose, and I'm going to pay the $100, and then you just file the notice of appeal. That's on the docket. That's the notice of appeal being filed. Okay. Right but now, it's not filed. Why is it not? It, it the, the, the Rule 24 I'm says to file them both. I'm, not, I'm going to forward you. To my supervisor. Okay, if you could, please. I can. That's good. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. I was speaking to someone just now, and um, um, we were having an argument, I guess, <laughs> about uh, how the IFP application with the uh, uh, notice of appeals gets filed. And uh, your your office seems to be giving the ent an entirely wrong information as opposed to what the appeals court says and what's in their rules your court your office says that i should file the ifp and then i should have the other document kind of sitting on the side and the clock well, keeps just wait for the judge to uh, make a ruling on it but that's not the rule the, the rule is you're supposed to put unfortunate wait a minute let me finish okay unfortunately we're not allowed to get into the rules because we're not attorneys you understand what i'm saying i understand what you're saying but we cannot get into those rules you cannot get into which rules we cannot speak upon that Upon upon the filing rules, that's for your office. You're the you're the clerk's office. We can, wait a minute. I'm to the filing rule is for your office. You want to allow me to talk, sir? Okay, sure. Go ahead. Take your time. If you don't mind. Sure, I'll let you speak. What I'm saying is that what I'm saying is we can't do any. We can't put it on docket until it's ruled upon. That's for our purposes. Right, but can you then see what's happening then? Because what the um individual I spoke to just now, what she says is, the clock keeps ticking. Then that makes no sense. But the clock, what, she said the clock keeps ticking on what? On the... It keeps ticking. If it's, if it's not on docket, it can't tick. Exactly. No, 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 because I, I because the rule is I, I get 30 days to file a notice of appeal. And according to what she says is, if it takes the judge... Uh, if I if I file it at 29 days and the judge takes two more days to uh, make a decision, then I run past that deadline. Wait a minute, you, you're confusing me now. You're saying, say for instance, you you filed it before the 38th. I mean, before the 30th day. You say, say for instance, you filed it the 25th day. The tw or I think I filed mine like the 28th or 29th day. So if it takes a few days for the judge to make a decision, then um, it goes past the 30 days. And what she told me is, uh, then it counts against me. But that's not what the rules say. The rules say is, when I file my when I file both those documents at the same time, it's as though I paid the fee, at least temporarily. I don't lose any time. And then down the road, the judge makes the decision. And then at that point, I have to pay if the judge says I have to pay. 
So it's not pay first. It's kind. It's long as you file the IFP, uh, you get not to pay. Make the payment until the judge denies it. When, when, you, when you file for an IFP, you have to wait for the ruling of the judge to determine whether or not you're going to be granted the IFP. Oh, I know. I do understand that, but mm. no. But the judge. But but I don't have. But I you know, I can escape the fee until the judge makes a ruling. And I, I, I should not lose my time either at the same time. Because what it says is that there's a process after that. After the judge rules, the, the ultimate end goes to the appeals court, and they basically send me a bill at the very end. So it, it really, the, at this point, once the process gets started, even if the judge rules against me, and then I get to file a motion to the appeals court just on the IFP alone, and if they also rule against me, they send me a bill. But at the same time, my filing date for the notice of appeal appeal is the date I submitted my document. That's what that's what DCCA rule 24 says. Well, we don't get into DCCA. We don't we don't go into that because we're not attorneys. We don't you don't have to be honest. right. That's your rule for the court. Which attorney is worried about uh, a IFP and a notice of appeal. That's for your court because your office is supposed to send the record then up to the appeals court. But I need to be able to follow that process. But you're giving me an entirely different set of rules. See? No, no, don't say me. Don't say I'm giving you anything. Okay, your office. You listening to you? Right, because because you you're giving me something entirely different because because it wouldn't make any sense because all you are. Tell you what, what you can do, women. Before you go any further, let me give you the person that you can speak to in regards to this, and then you can just... Oh, uh, ma'am, okay. let me tell you, you, you are not following the rules. There's no person to speak to. Sir, wait a minute. Hold it. Where are you coming from? I'm trying to assist you. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. You deliberately, you deliberately didn't follow the rules. I'm sorry. I'm, oh, I'm still here. I I just dropped my phone. I dropped my phone. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna transfer your call to someone that can better equip you with the information. Can you tell me who that person is? Is that okay? Can you tell me who they are? Find out the person is. Can you wait a minute? I'm not gonna allow you to keep the tip trying to intimidate me. I'm trying to speak, and then you're trying to speak over me. Okay. I'm going to give you that information. i got to first find out who's available. Okay, okay, okay great. Is that okay? Sure. All right. Thank you. Hold on. Okay. And I'll find out who's available, and then I'll give you the name. All righty. And then first give me your name, okay? Okay. I'm the plaintiff, Joseph Trasaya, and I guess my name is a little hard to spell, but it's... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh-huh, Joseph. Okay, last name is spelled C.S. and Charles, R-U, S.S. Uh -huh. and Sam, S.S. and Sam, I-A-H. Messiah. Yes, got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's 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 just give me a topic so I can just let the person know. Okay. The topic is that your uh, your office rules is is giving an entirely different set of rules than what's the law, and the law is I'm supposed to be able to file those two documents which I mentioned. It tells me to file and obviously I cannot get into your system and file it you have to do the actual filing but your office did not file the second you document can't you can't get into the system I cannot file, file? I'm sorry oh no you can't get in but exactly exactly so see so, right so so you can see what I mean because the the rules say I'm supposed to file those two documents at the same time but obviously I cannot, I don't work at your place, I cannot file, yes, sir. actually do the actual uh, actual physical filing, and that you have to do. But your office refused to file one of the two documents. And so then... They shouldn't, they shouldn't refuse anything, but you, could, you should be able to come in to file. No, I mean... There no, be no ifs, ands, or buts about that. No, uh, what I meant is, it's the same thing that you're saying, which is the IFP. Um, filing was accepted. The other filing was kept on the side without giving an actual date of filing. 
So um, I should get a date of filing off as I filed it on May 9th. Right. And there should be no doubt about my filing date being May 9th until the very end of the process when the appeals court sends me a bill if, you know, if it goes that far where I didn't get approved and they send me a bill for $100 and I don't pay it by the due date, then... Right. I go past the time, but um, as long as I follow those rules, my filing date always stays May 9th. It never goes beyond May 9th. It, it only goes beyond, and, and once they send me a bill, if I don't pay it, it's not just even a date, it's, it's as though I never even filed it. That, that makes sense. But I have to be able to go through the process uh, without your office deciding right now not to put it on the docket. It's supposed to be on the docket. I mean, that's, I mean, you do understand that's, I mean, that's, oh, because, yes, most definitely. I mean, so I just want you to get my item, I mean, if you could, on the docket. So even if the judge does not grant it, I'm willing to go through the process. At the end of the process, if the appeals court says I owe $100, I'm going to pay. It. Pay. Yeah, I mean, but I have, no, but but that's the rule. And if you like and and if you see all the rulings, even if you see the IFP process, the the one thing they make a big point of is they want to give equal justice. So they're not going to say someone who can pay, they get to come in at the very last day and file it. A notice of appeal and then for me who cannot pay I have to like do it earlier and I have to just hope and pray that the judge gets it done in time for me and if not you know I'm gone and and you know like it when you file an appeal the reason people keep it to the end is not because they are procrastinating it's because the whole appeal it's a very difficult process, and most people kind of are not encouraged to go forward. Yeah. Right, because so, so that's the big decision to make, and you don't just jump and say, okay, the judge ruled against you, I'm going to go appeal right right off the bat. You, you kind of wait till the very end, and then you know, because, because if you don't do it at the very end, you lose your rights at that point, right? I mean, once you go past... Once you, right. once you go past 30 days, you have to beg the other side and you have to beg the judge. But if I get it in just before the 30 days, I don't have to beg anyone. And at the end of the day, the worst that can happen is I would have to find some way to come up with the $100 at some point down the road. But I don't have to come up with the $100 now and I don't have to lose my right and kind of hope and pray the judge does things, you know, in time. Because, you know, then it's kind of, and then all of a sudden you have two different systems. And you know, Washington, right. and you know, Washington DC area is a place where you have such a contrast in income. You have the richest people and the poorest people in the right. same place. So, and you can see what happens. So, if you're the poorest person, you have a much difficult process, and all the court, and if you if you look at the IFP application, they have a few citations, and all the citations says they want to give equal justice whether you can pay or the or whether you cannot pay. So it's kind of okay if there's some kind of a delay. I I never had an objection for your office taking some more time, or even if you need two weeks or a month, even that's not a big deal. For me, the issue is, you know, uh, that extra time shouldn't cost me my right to appeal, with, you know, to file that notice. So, you know, if I mean, if you can understand that point, then I don't really need to speak to somebody else. So, and I just don't want to lose my right. So, 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 so I'm saying, okay. So, uh, I, I'm not sure I, I should really need to speak to somebody else. I mean, if you can speak to them and see if they can just get that item on it so I don't lose that right. Because actually... So I'm going to put you directly with someone this way they can speak to you. <laughs> right. And give you more... Do you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Because right. I would like for someone higher than me, 
understand. Right, because unless someone can guarantee uh -huh. that I don't lose that right to appeal, I mean, that's, I that's all I need someone to tell me, that, 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 that since I came in yesterday on time uh -huh. and did what I'm supposed to do, uh, I don't lose my right to appeal where I have to beg the judge down the road. You know, you know that's going to be a real difficult process. It's like a wasted process. It's a lot of extra work to have all, all those extra moves. <laughs> so, you know, you know, <laughs> right. So, 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 so I guess the basic point is, so, you know, so, so the issue is really not, even if the judge wants to deny the IFP, it's okay with me because I, I can, I can file the appeal to the appeals code. And at the end of the day, I know I have like a definite, and even at that point, they don't ask, I guess from what they say, they don't ask you for the money right away. They'll let you know, you know, when the money is due. So you kind of have a few days to, I guess, to get the money together and, and pay up. So, but um, I guess the bottom line is just because you don't have the money uh, on day 30, it shouldn't mean that you, you should lose your right to appeal, at least not immediately, you know, until after you go through the, you know, so, so at least run, not at that point, but once you go through the process and you, if I don't live up to my end of the deal, then yeah, then I should lose my right. But right. exactly. So. Kusai, what's your telephone number, just in case? Okay, uh, my phone number is two four zero four seven five seven seven three seven. Okay. Well, I see who's here. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hello? Yes, hello? Yes, I talk, uh, hello? Yes, hello? Yes, I'm... Hello? Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay, I'm still here. Oh, That's okay. Okay. I spoke to, um, 
my supervisor and what he has directed me, what you can do, and I understand what you were saying, he said what you can do is amend the IFP and attach the appeal with it. Okay, to amend the IFP and it. You want to file an appeal, am I correct? I, okay, I think the all those items are all, you just mentioned they were already in the system attached to the back already. No, 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 I didn't say anything. I said what you can do. Oh, okay, I didn't okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I forget. No, 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 actually, the, 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 the individual who answered the phone first. You're the supervisor, right? Okay, okay. So, okay, the individual who answered the phone first, she said, um, the, the, on your system, the appeal is attached behind the IFP already. Mm -hmm. but, you, but it's not being docketed. I'm sorry? Right, exactly. In order, what you would have to do is amend the IFP and then attach the appeal to it. But what's the reason to amend the IFP? Whatever she, I'm sorry? I'm, but I'm trying to figure out what information would change on the IFP to, to amend it. Because you want to change, you want to add that appeal to it. Okay, um, I think what she said is the appeal is already attached. No. The only thing she said is it's, it's not docketed. Right. You have to, in order for that appeal to be docketed, to amend the IFP. Okay, to amend the IFP and do what to the IFP? Yes, okay. Attach the appeal. In order to attach the appeal. What you say? I want to amend the IFP to attach the appeal. Okay. But, yeah, because mm -hmm. I was on the impression that these are two separate documents. The IFP is separate from the appeal itself. So you file them both together. Okay, but I'm, I'm guessing since you have it, because I mean... You're adding the appeal on to that. But see, it's, it's the I appeal you're just appealing to not having to pay. Right. But you want to add the appeal on to whatever that, um, if, not the I, when I say I appeal. Right, but if I... Your complaint was the initial... Okay. But if I had, if I paid the fee, I would have the appeal standing independently. So I don't, I don't know why the appeal. You have to, yeah. In order, because what you would have to do in order to get that on doc, that appeal on docket before the IFP is approved, you amend the IFP to attach that appeal to it because that appeal and whatever else was on that to get in order for you to apply for the IFP will go all into one. Okay, so that's exactly what the person said yesterday and this morning as well, that it's attached to this, oh. it's attached to the IFP, but they just can't give me a stamp for both items. They, I got a stamp for the IFP. And that you're right. And they said in the system they scanned it what in. Did you file yesterday? I'm sorry? What did uh, you file yesterday? Okay. I filed I filed the um, IFP and I filed the uh, notice of appeal which included a copy of the court's ruling uh, at the back. And so all that got scanned together. It's just officially it was all scanned as one document. Exactly. For exactly. IFP. But I'm saying you want to appeal. You said you want to add something else, and that you want to add the appeal. Oh no! Right. I don't want to add anything. I, I just want to make sure that what's you there. Want to add the appeal. Oh no, no! I just want to make sure that whatever I already submitted is there. There's, there's nothing new for me to submit. I have nothing else to oh, submit. Okay. Oh no, no, I just have the, uh, oh no, I was just talking about the IFP and the, and the notice of appeal. And what happened, so what they said is they put everything together, but on the system they show the IFP is filed, but in the system they don't show the notice of appeal is filed. But they're both together with the same document and the, and, and one of the issues also, I guess, is because it doesn't show up in the system where I can see it. It shows no document to view. Oh, man. Okay. Let me go in here and see what I can do. Oh, I see. Let's see if I get out of here. Did you get a case number yet? Who's buying? Yeah, yeah. It's, Did you get a case number? 
Oh, a new case number for the appeal? No, I didn't. No, it's it, it's the same old. I didn't get any new case number now. Last name of the defendant, the main, the lead defendant is Medstar Health, so it comes Medstar Health at all. Okay. This is a brand new uh, appeal, uh, I guess. So it's a right, and um, was it Metstar on Eugene Leonard? Oh no, no. Well, if you go by Metstar, they get hundreds of cases, so you probably want to use my name. Right. Who's the uh, plaintiff? That's a plaintiff. That's me. Um, I can give you the case number, or I, I can give you my last name. Okay, give me the case number. Okay, the case number is two thousand seventeen, C A. Zero zero seven six nine four B. Yeah, I think Metstar has hundreds of cases, so there's no way to find one from them. Um, what they said is um, the same thing the person I spoke to first today, who, which is that they attached the the second document behind the first one, uh, but they won't like officially file it until the judge rules on it. Okay. And there was like a second issue too, because I actually filed an IFP earlier, and I'm actually uh, supposed to be calling and speaking to Judge Mars Law Clerk, which is oh, okay. because I I should have had. I mean, that's why the whole problem came. I should have had the IFP on file when I opened the case. I paid myself, but then when I filed a motion on February twenty one. Um, Yes, uh, I filed, uh, I also had an IFP, and I, I know for sure the judge approved the IFP, but it wasn't that clear in the system, so that's why the confusion came and I had to even oh, submit no, it. Yeah, looks, looking at this here. Because what his law clerk says is that he did approve it. Part. Right, because see... Back in February. No, no, no. Well, that's if if you if you if, if you read it, the motion says two different things. It says motion to proceed improperous, and and the other one is that it was a motion denied for temporary restraining. Exactly. So when they say motion denied in part, approved in part, what's approved? Two things. Exactly. Exactly. So what's approved is the IFP. What's denied is the is the TRO. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't really de they couldn't really deny the IFP in part and approve in part. It's either one or the other, right? So right, right. <laughs> so you can't really have it's, <laughs> right, right, right. Because right. But since they had like two, since they had two different motions together what the judge meant by denied in part and 
and granted in part what denied was the TRO and what's granted was the IFP so I was supposed to have the IFP on file but I think what the judge was supposed to also do is uh, with the IFP he's supposed to because when I when I file it I see that there's an actual paper order that he has to sign off on and I think he never signed off on that form Exactly. So I, uh, I spoke to them yesterday from the courthouse itself, and they said they're working on that. And I think more likely than not, it's going to get resolved at the first level there, where um, it's going to show that I was already approved. So this, so the second one kind of becomes irrelevant. I really have to file this one because the first one wasn't showing up. I mean, and and realistically, if it's yeah, so, yeah, that should have. I think that should. I think the. I think the problem which came is when the judge's office when they approved it, they didn't put it on paper. It was oral, and but he was still supposed to put it on paper because the application I submitted at the last page uh, has this paper for him to sign off on it. So he's supposed to say denied or approved or whatever on that form, which I you know, which comes with that package. It's like a seven-page package at the end. At the at the end, so it's, so it's like a it's like a pre-printed form that he's supposed to do base and he didn't do that so he, he just did the oral order and so what they say is the oral order is the same thing but I guess your office they want to see the actual thing signed so that's what he didn't do so I think if he can do that if he can do that that solves it even before you know the second uh, you can talk to him you can always talk you can talk to him too you know, why whoever you speak to them. Oh, right. Uh, no, she, no, no. Uh, she was very good. She said she's going to work on it, and she wanted me to call her back this morning or afternoon. I guess late morning, so uh, she has to work work it out. But I think uh, more likely than not, it's going to, uh, you know, I'm sure he approved it the first time around. So I think this issue really shouldn't even be there. But, but since I did file it this way also, this was like the backup thing. And then, it, you know, what what the office, your office was saying is, well, if I, even even with my backup plan, since, since I didn't. Once we get that, because see, we can't just put anything on docket. Once we can get that that ruling, the order that, that he granted, and, you know, once we get it from their office, then we can put it on docket. But other than that, we can't put anything on docket until we get a response back. You understand? But we just can't. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, I mean, my point basically is not necessarily even to uh, get you to do what I want you to do, but to just make sure that I can, you know, down the road, if a, if a, if an issue arises, I can make the point that I did call to protest that, you know, I did file it, and so they can't say that I did not file it. So, right, right. right. So, I just want to make sure that down the road, if the other side or the judge or whoever wants to say that I didn't file it in time, uh, so I can say I did file it and this was the problem we had. So, it was not that I didn't file it. And so, uh, so realistic, real, realistically, I should only get penalized if I didn't file it, but I did file it. So, at this point. Okay. I'm just waiting for the approval, and I think it's going to get. Um, I have to speak to his law clerk once again, so I'm not sure how busy they are. But I guess uh, I'll, you know, hopefully, you know, once they get it done, and if they can issue that order the first time, you know, right. the one from the first time, which, which he should, he, he should have had a hard copy. And I see what your office means. You know, he he never put out a hard copy, so uh, and so maybe that can solve the whole thing. And so if that gets done today, I guess uh, your office can probably uh, get the other filing taken care of as well. Well, check and find out and um, see what they're going to do. Okay, yeah, I will check with them. And, and, and what they did say is they will update it in the system. Oh, okay. So, um, okay, okay. All right, thank you very much for your time. Okay, okay. You're welcome. You All right. have a good day. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye. Uh -huh.